Helen would be very, very glad to see all of you here. And um, <clears throat> after this, I'm going to report everything that happened <laughs> here. And she will be very, very happy. Um, let's see. Um, <clears throat> in 1979, Hilda um, published <clears throat> this book of poetry. Um, she had been writing very intently for three, four years. And um, when Hilda does anything, it's not quiet in a corner. She's <laughs> involving everyone around. And um, she would work on a poem, and <clears throat> one of the children would run into the kitchen for something and with a friend, and she would stop them and say, listen to this, and read the poem. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Afterwards, the children would say, why were you talking so funny? Uh, <laughs> and also, don't embarrass me in front of my friends with what you're doing. And Hilda's response was, being embarrassed by poetry should not occur. Poetry is part of our life. Um, I'll continue to stop you and read a poem <laughs> in front of friends whether you're embarrassed or not. So they cease to be embarrassed. Um, <clears throat> but um, she published this um, herself, of course, as poets uh, usually have to do. <clears throat> and she wrote um, a preface to all the poems in this book. And I'm going to read six of them. <clears throat> but she wrote a preface um, to all the poems, and the preface is this. The tongue seeks out the space where tooth has been. As in the hollows of the night, I hunt incisor words to cut a mouth for the unspoken years. That's the lines. Okay, um, and <clears throat> The first poem I'll read is uh, Childhood, and uh, Hilda grew up in Utica. Her family, her parents, bought an old farmhouse in the foothills of the Adirondacks, and um, <clears throat> they spent summers there, and Hilda absolutely loved that place. And uh, anyway, this, um, this poem refers to that. <clears throat> Childhood. I remember the mellow years, the subaquarian greens and blues, and yellows where the sun broke through the leaves, and infant fish played, catch me if you can, among the thimble caves. I remember the endless drones of minutes and how they spun the hours out like honeycombs, and sun consumed the hours and gave its rich, deep gift of dusk. And how the dusk smelled <clears throat> with the lanterns and the bread and milk on mother's table and the cool embrace of sleep while moons and planets swam above my head. And now the dawn. I ask me where the mellow years are ahead <clears throat> and tell myself this stray cat of a heart can still spring into them and settle down these nights when rainy windows harbor ghosts waiting <clears throat> to take me home. Um, next poem is a poem um, about um, a playmate she had up at this farm where they lived. And um, this playmate came only occasionally. <clears throat> and um, then through the years, they were not close at all, but she always inquired after him and then learned <clears throat> of the tragic event of his suicide. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Um, <clears throat> the name of the poem is uh, 
to Arnold, with whom I used to pick raspberries when we were children 35 years ago. Arnold, you were a fool to shoot yourself. Social arrangements aren't everything. Even if your wife threw you out, even if your own children turned their backs on you, you should have lived to spite them. Huh. The trouble is you never learn more than the human species matters. Now I'll pick for myself the raspberries <clears throat> that you can't pick. The reddest ones are just as good as last year's. Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> This is entitled, As Death Instructs. As death instructs, I clasp the curves of beauty as she walks unsashed in night, and soft the petals fall from blossoms in her hair. And when she goes, loose robed from me, and fragrant sweet, she le leaves behind no gift, no shadow tracing of her form, but hard, clear absence. Sharply cut as diamonds, and a thirst for her as proud as she is rare. <clears throat> see. Um, this um, is a poem Hilda wrote about poem making, and it's entitled Poem Making. <clears throat> Before sleep, I palpate dark, finger it for soft spots where the merest touch would leave a dent. And when I find one, imagine I can use it in some way, like nail parings or a clump of someone's hair then explore it, widening the spot with nervous fingers, pat out a secret place I wall with words, shore up with steadying phrases, where I can be a little friendly with the dark and listen for the sound of something being born. Let's see. Um, the next poem is entitled uh, Being, <clears throat> and this is spelled B-E-E-I-N-G. <laughs> Being, how to be quiet, busy, working the clover, how to not take time out to announce oneself, but closed in one's own buzz, and saturated with yellow dust of one's trade. How to go on working the clover. Let's see. <clears throat> and the um, final one is um, the circle. The circle, the only good thing that can be said about dying brings small comfort. That rotted wood breaks down to seabed, new things grow there. But we are attached to old things, the new don't have a personality yet. Yet, out of loss springs loneliness. Out of loneliness springs need. Out of need springs loving. <clears throat> and with loving, all begins again. 